Welcome back. It is always a good day when I wake up, I give thanks, and my puppy and I head out to the studio because we know that we're going to introduce you to another very intriguing human being. Uh, Robert and I have had a little trouble connecting, um, but we finally have figured it out, and we are here today. My guest is Robert Lyon. He is a seven-time Emmy-winning photojournalist. Unbelievable with CBS News. He now does documentaries, and he is really an amazing filmmaker. Uh, we Don't Die is a just an in extraordinary movie that I actually just purchased and watched myself. And I'll put all of the links to all of the things that Robert has done uh, so that you can go check them out, too. Uh, welcome to the next room, Robert. It's good that you made it. It's Robert Lyon is his name. Correct. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate well, it. Okay, Robert. So let's jump right in. You you win these awards. You are a photojournalist. You've won Emmys with CBS News. How do you go from the news, which is so based in this kind of, I don't know, I just think it's so negative anymore, but it's such a reality-based area of being a creative <clears throat> to swinging all the way over into the afterlife? I love that you made the pivot. I want to hear how it came to be. Well, I spent 10 years in the news business. It was I, my first career job at, uh, it was a Fox station in Miami called um, Channel 7, WSVN. And I was a overnight editor, which meant I had to wake up at two in the morning, drive all the way across town, start work at three in the morning as a tape editor. You know, we had like, basically like having two VCRs and you press play on one and record on the other and literally make videos by cutting the tape and that was all the way back in 97 and i was still in college i was at fiu as well so i worked there for about a year doing this overnight editing gig and then i went to cbs then the next year um which i actually had interned there um while i was in school but um i ended up staying at cbs for 10 years and back then the news was a lot different than it is now because I mean we have all this crazy polarization and politics and and the fake news and every, whatever you want to call it I feel like I was in it during somewhat of a heyday uh -huh. where we did a lot of good projects I was one of two photographers in the special projects division out of we had 25 staff photojournalists at CBS and my job was to do investigative reporting um I, a little bit of entertainment <clears throat> but it was more the the long format instead of the um you know go out to a house fire or a crime scene which i did plenty of that i mean i've had rocks thrown at me tear gassed uh almost beat up by gangs a anything you can think of that could happen to a photographer in the in different neighborhoods around miami happened to me i would stand out there in the hurricanes with the camera on my shoulder holding on to something and you know trying not to get electrocuted by a falling power line um it was all very exciting and that was the early 2000s so um i was a lot younger i was willing to take more risks than i am now um but yeah i had a blast and 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 back then they had money to travel so we did um trips to the caribbean <clears throat> i'm sorry for the cough i'm just getting over the flu um we did trips to the caribbean the australian outback the amazon jungle i've done interviews with different world leaders presidents of the united states and just all kinds of great stuff i mean it, it was a blast i don't regret any of it i remember towards the end uh around 2007 kind of just having this heavy thought about you know all the bad news that i was covering because i did see a lot of bad news and just I decided I wanted to get out of it. Um, but back then I didn't realize what I was going to get into. I, I still it still hadn't come to me yet. Um, but it's where when I left CBS, the next chapter of my life did lead me into doing films about afterlife. <clears throat> and that happened because I was a freelance um, videographer and I just did odd jobs around town and it was a word of mouth thing so someone said hey you know come do this gig and i'd go do it and get paid and that was it but one day i got a job with a, a car race team uh, that was sponsored by tequila patron 
And, uh, you know, we had a lot of Patron drinks while we were doing the job, which was a lot of fun. <laughs> and we'd go cover these car races. Um, and if you got, if your audience is familiar with Sandra Champlain from We Don't Die, you probably know her story, how she um, yes. catered to the car race teams. So that's was me. I was on one of the official teams. I was their photographer and videographer. So I'd have my breakfast, lunch, and dinner in Sandra Champlain's uh, catering tent. And simultaneously, I'd already been interested in um, afterlife topics and studies, but I was, you know, I was curious. I kind of came from more of an atheist background and really just thought, you know, when you died, you died. Right. And that was it, which is very depressing if you think about it. It is. Um, Fade to Black, I have a lot of uh, individuals. Yeah. I've actually interviewed a few. I find them fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I thought um, from the time I was a teenager till till around that period, which is, you know, this is already now 12 years ago. <clears throat> but I was having um, dinner in the in the tent and I saw the book We Don't Die for sale. And I have my copy right here. Um, but this was, you know, Sandra Champlain had her big poster in the in the in the lunchroom. So like, what, you know, what is that? So I got it. I, I went and bought it. I didn't know her yet. In fact, her mother, Marion, was the one that would, when you would come into the tent, you know, look at you and say, first time she saw me, she said, who are you? Because she didn't recognize me. Who are you? And I was like, oh, I'm the, the new photographer for this team. And, you know, so I got to know her a little bit, but I didn't know Sandra yet. And I just picked up the book, read it. It's it was a great read. I got through it pretty quickly because it was just so fascinating, all the different topics. <clears throat> so I ended up reading it twice, which is pretty impressive because I, I don't really read as much as I should. So I read the book twice and and approached Sandra and said, you know, you don't know me, but I do all this video work for these race teams. Uh, I really enjoyed your book. Maybe there's some way we can work together. And she was interested. So I ended up buying a ticket to go up to her home near Boston and spent the weekend filming with her. And we did a short one hour, kind of like an extended interview with her about the book, which was the We Don't Die, you know, documentary that was on, it was on Gaia TV for, for many years. Um, I think you can find it on wedontdie.com uh, for anyone that's interested in watching it. But that's where it really started. And it was, there was a couple uh, live events that she did way back, I think 2012, um, that I came and filmed. One was with Steven, the medium from that area. And I got to see my first live demonstration with Steven, the medium. And it was just so impressive to me to see how a medium can, you know, work this room of a hundred people and, and everybody's, you know, the recipients of the messages are saying, yes, yes, yes. Um, so I really knew that that was the kind of work I wanted to do. Obviously kept my race team job. I actually, I actually worked with the race team for 10 years simultaneously while starting the, we don't die, um, content, but 2019s were really started to ramp up for me because they had, um, we, well, Sandra hosted, we don't die Orlando event, which had, uh, you know, it was like five days of all these great presentations and that's where i met or was you know introduced to sonia rinaldi philip dykes carrie mcleod scott milligan darren Wynn, uh all the the we don't die family um and just seeing all their presentations and i was filming it for 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 sandra because she asked me to come and film it but i'm watching all this i'm saying how come no one's made a documentary about these different people <laughs> and then I said, well, if nobody's made it yet, I need to do it. And I need to do it quickly before someone else beats me to it. And, mm -hmm. and that's where, you know, I got the inspiration to do the first documentary, We Don't Die Films documentary, which is Rinaldi Instrumental Transcommunication to the Other Side, which is available on Amazon Prime. Yes, it is. Oh, it's what? really, really well done, too. You know, congratulations on that. And and I'll post a link for that. And you can rent it for like a dollar ninety nine. Yeah. Um, and affordable. it was yeah, I just sat and I was mesmerized. And I've known Sandra for a while, but you know, 
life goes on and you get busy and and you can't always dedicate the time to read. I have to read the books of the authors that I have on this show mm -hmm. and I'm writing my second and third book. So uh, you get busy and you can't watch everything. So I finally, I'm like, oh, I'm having Robert on the show. I best watch some of his work. Okay. Um, beautifully done. Uh, Sandra did a great job with the voiceover on it. Um, I love the interviews. I love how it was edited. I love the music, the beautiful background music that was put in. It was really well done. And so if you're listening right now to Robert Lyon uh, on the next room, I will put links to everything. We'll do Rinaldi. We've got Past But Present, which is a docuseries, uh, Evidence of the Afterlife, um, TheMediumMovie.com which is Phil Dykes and Kerry McLeod is in that. And also I'll put a link to the YouTube channel, which is We Don't Die Films. Mm -hmm. um, so mediummovie.com is going to be obsolete now because that was a, um, oh. a, a URL we used to just fundraise for the, the documentary. Okay. The Afterlife, which will, you can just find that at we don't die films.com. Okay. Okay. Um, but we Good put to that know. Short, yeah, we put that short link because we were doing uh, a fundraiser because it's, um, you know, if if people don't know who, who I am, I'm not backed by Hollywood. So I'm a very independent producer. Right. So I rely on donations to make these films and we crowdfund them. Rinaldi was crowdfunded. Um, and so will be evidence of the afterlife, which is a film dedicated to evidential mediumship. And it features Philip Dykes and Carrie McLeod, the husband and wife medium team from the UK. So basically we're trying to tell a story of uh, you know about evidential mediumship through their experiences and their teachings and that's going to be a great movie it's it's about 50 percent done filmed and um i have a, a lot of big plans for early 2024 for filming for that movie and then okay. i'll get editing on it somewhere in, in the summertime it's so gonna... have you did you reach your goal did you get all the necessary funds that you needed for evidence of the afterlife <clears throat> no we came up short um, but it wasn't like one of those fundraisers where it's all or nothing. It was okay. through a, uh, it was through a charity organization called from the heart productions, uh, who is a woman named Carol Dean out in Oxnard, California. And she's got decades of experience helping independent producers make films. Um, so she has, it's a charity. So if you donate to this film, you can put it, you could write it off as a tax write off. Um, because you're you're donating to a charity so what they do is they take the the donation they take a little bit of percentage and then they send a check and then that check goes into my production costs um but so even though we didn't reach the goal we reached a, a nice significant number that's going to help help with the expenses for uh these next trips that i need to do to to keep filming i love yeah. it so all, everybody that was part of that you know, i actually just wrote the thank you note to everybody now because the, the the campaign ended yesterday. I know. Uh, I just got my thank you note this morning, as a matter of fact. Okay, good. Yeah, so we, you know, we don't want to just ask for, for money. So we made it a, sure. a festival kind of thing where we had Craig Hogan of AREI give a big talk, which was amazing. And I'm going to break that up into smaller bits and put that out on YouTube. And we had um, Evidential Mediumship Jennifer Brazier do a demonstration uh, Phil and Carrie did a demonstration, and then we had Phil and Carrie's top students do the first week. They did there was four of them that did these demonstrations. Which, I mean, to me, I don't know how I could do that. You know, just go up there and demonstrate to a live audience of a hundred people. It's terrifying to me, but they did it and they donated their time, and I really appreciate them for doing that. Um. Wow. So well, that those all were really great little um, live events that the donors were able to see for, for a minimum. It was just a $10 donation. Um, but if someone wanted to donate more, they could. And we had um, different producer credit kind of incentives. So, well, that's great. And uh, what is the name of Carol Dean's um, nonprofit? You had mentioned the Lady in Oxnard. Uh, yeah, it's From the Heart Productions. Okay. That's mm -hmm. good to know. All right, great. They do, they do grants for filmmakers. Uh, they have a grant every season of the year, um, which we applied to. We didn't get in on the on this last one, but maybe the next one will have some luck. Um, you know, because it's a little bit of cash, but it's also 
donations from people that support filmmakers like there's all this stuff that people wouldn't really consider with editing you have color correction specialists that will help you know colorize your film the proper way uh or sound engineering or legal advice all these different things that one person wouldn't be able to do because i i pretty much a one-man band when it comes to making my movies um <laughs> yeah and obviously sandra is my partner on that and she helped me write rinaldi and she's a very big part of making these films as well yeah. but all the filming is done by me it's just one camera i do all the sound i do all the editing i pick out the music which is really important the music for me is the first thing i do absolutely um, because the music inspires me for the scene absolutely Rather no than... i felt that especially when watching rinaldi i was like wow the music was because i'm such a music girl i mean i started off as a, a radio jock back in my 20s so uh, music is just ingrained in me so i was listening and i was trying to find out you know the credits because some of the pieces were really great because mm -hmm. i love beautiful instrumental vibey music so i'll have to talk to you about that later um what you know we're talking about your filmmaking and the machinations behind that but what about this afterlife like what do you now that you have you know kind of transitioned from the atheist side of things to a believer so to speak what do you think about is in that next realm i like to call it the next room thus the name <clears throat> of the podcast in my book what do you hope or what do you desire or what do you think will be there uh when you shed the meat suit and mm -hmm. move beyond from all my experience with dealing with my now close friends phil and carrie scott milligan darren and jennifer brazier the what i believe is we do not suffer in dying it's like the soul goes away before the the body has that traumatic experience and we just step into the next uh realm of reality which is a non-physical world just like here feels real looks real but the colors are more vibrant everything looks better sounds better tastes better uh there's no negativity um it's like what people would call heaven but it's just like I, I think that earth is kind of like a um physical representation of where we would go next um but i don't think it ends there i i believe that there's layers of consciousness that go above the next plane of existence which is what we call the spirit world and things lead me to believe that are if you look at um, like ancient traditions and they're like 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 the Vedics, the Indian culture, you look at their artwork and the representation of different like gods and all the colors and everything that they have. It's such a different world. So I was talking to, um, <clears throat> you know, Sid Patrick in New Orleans. I do he's not. A, he's a medium in New Orleans um, that. He hosts Touching Eternity, which Scott Milligan um, goes and does presentations at and um, seances. And I was with Sid and we were at an Indian restaurant and I said, look at this artwork. You're like, what does it represent to you? Like, it's if that's a there's a, if there's a spirit world that we hear from, you know, spirits that are talking to us through trance mediums and they're saying it's just like your world. You just step through one door, you come out the other side and it's just basically like the same, then what are these guys representing in their artwork? You know, when you go into older um, cultures, you know, you know, what, what's all the artwork in Egypt represent? What's all this artwork, you know, in Asian cultures, Tibet, uh, India, and they've been around 4,000 years. So I like to ponder that there's, we just don't understand right now, but there's these other levels because I've heard um them say that you know when we're in the spirit world we're still learning so <clears throat> what are you what are you learning about what do you need to learn if you're already in in heaven what do you need to advance why do you need to um keep learning and i i just think that maybe because that's not really the that's not the the end like there's it goes on beyond that and we have to 
keep learning and when we advance and we move up this kind of like i don't know some kind of ladder of spiritual consciousness consciousness that eventually is the ultimate divine source at the very top and sid patrick noticed that if you look at the chakras that that could be a representation of these these realms like and he said we're in we're in like the orange right now where we sit and then there's you know it goes up from there and like the indian culture they might be at the top they might be in the the blue or purple um realms if you were to take the the chakra system and compare it to the afterlife um, so I think that's fun to ponder. I don't know, obviously, what do I know? Um, but I, what I do know is my whole view on afterlife has changed 100% since I've met all these guys and become friends with them and just really been soaking up all these different interpretations and messages and listening to Milligan's spirits talk to him through trance and all the wisdom that comes through that. <clears throat> and I actually plan on doing a documentary about Milligan as well. If people in the audience don't know who Scott Milligan is, the physical medium, he lives in, in England near Brighton. And I've already actually started filming for that. But it's uh, that's a slow going process because, you know, they're all over there and it's going back and forth and it's going to take a while. But somewhere down the road, there'll be a Milligan We Don't Die Films documentary as well. I just find him the most interesting character I've ever met in my life. I love that. Um, good answer. Thank you very much for sharing uh, from <laughs> your heart what you're what you're feeling or or what you've been learning because uh, yeah, Earth School is pretty amazing. So your view on afterlife has changed a hundred percent. You've got some incredible projects coming up. Um, if you just tuned in, Robert Lyon is my guest. He is a photojournalist, uh, Emmy Award winning uh, photojournalist, filmmaker, producer, director. He does it all. Videographer. Um, let's talk about uh, Sonia Rinaldi for a moment. When you are filming her, I mean, she uses vapor. She uses cloth. She uses bubble wrap. Uh, she uses photographs and then this shape that looks like um, like an egg shape thing that she does. And then she's able to call upon those that have traveled before us and are now in the next room. And then these new images come up of these deceased loved ones. It's fascinating. I mean, I was sitting there going, what is this lady doing? When you were actually filming it, talk to me about your experience with that and how you felt actually watching her do her her magic so to speak when i first saw sonia do her presentation i said how could this be true first of all how could this be real um but i i, I knew i wanted to do a piece on it because it was so out there and like nothing i've ever experienced before and it's a tough one because you you can have a skeptical point of view on this subject matter which um i'm a healthy skeptic as well so and i've i've obviously met a lot of my or a lot of my friends who saw the movie are like oh this is you know not real i've been scrutinized on the internet for it um amongst my friends as well because it is kind of hard to digest for just somebody who's not really open to the possibilities of what spirit world can do in our physical world so I really did, you know, kind of take a chance by doing this, this movie, uh, put myself out there, which I was willing to, to take it. Um, because I, I do uh, feel strongly about, you know, uncovering all these kinds of um, different ways that spirit can work with us in the physical realm. Um, so I, I felt very privileged that first of all, she allowed me to do the documentary about her because she didn't know who I was at the time other than Sandra's friend. And, and at first she said no, and she didn't want to do it. <clears throat> but I, I talked her into it a little bit and um, spent a week in Brazil with her. Sorry. <clears throat> it's okay. Take your time. Which, you uh, 
You need some tea or water? No, I'm good. Okay. I might need some ginger drink. <laughs> um, so I spent a week with her in Brazil and was able to be behind the scenes and film with her as she was doing the experiments. And yeah, it was really incredible to watch how it all worked. And, you know, it's not like you in real time as your human eye looks into the, the vapor and sees these things. She has right. to pause the, the video and go frame by frame. There's 30 seconds, right? 30 frames per second. And then she'll go through and, you know, you'll see the, the picture manipulated within the, the different re refraction techniques that she uses. And, and, and people, skeptical people will say, hey, well, that's just, you know, that's just a picture being manipulated by, by light and by smoke. And, but then I, but then I consider if you believe this thing and you believe that thing, then it would lead you to believe this thing. And, and, and what I mean by that is I have had some experiences making that film that, that helped me to not be skeptical about it. For example, like Scott Milligan, who I've sat now in eight of his seances and filmed him go into the trance session and his spirit guides speak through him. And they actually gave instructions to Sonia Rinaldi for her experiments that were to come later on down the road. So, okay, you wanna be skeptical about Sonia Rinaldi's technique? but you believe 100% in Scott Milligan and, and his trans mediumship. Well, the spirits spoke through Scott saying to Sonia Rinaldi in that room, I have it on camera, I filmed this, to do specific instructions with the color of light and the condensation, uh, the water running over the egg. So these instructions came from directly from the spirit world. So that to me, that's mind blowing. Um, yeah. And the other one is, um, so one of the one of the 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 women that was in the movie, Patricia. I went to interview her in New York, and she explained to me that she had a reading with Philip Dykes, and in Philip Dykes' reading, he said, "You're going to be working. Your daughter is going to be working with you through Sonia Rinaldi." Uh, and now that, yeah I, that was great that was in the movie yes um and i've had reading a re i had a reading with philip dykes before he got to know me and it was just so unbelievable spot on half an hour reading where every word that came out of his mouth was a definite connection for me to old memories things that happened two weeks ago um mm -hmm. undeniable so that's where I say like, okay, well, it's, it's understandable if someone's going to be skeptical about these images being manipulated. Is it really the spirit world doing this? Well, sure. Um, go ahead and be skeptical. But I'm going to say if, if someone came through in a Philip Dykes reading and told me that I'm going to work with Sonia and then a spirit guide came through Milligan in a trance session and said to instructions to Sonia, like all these things just, they all add up. They all work together. Right. Alignment. Yeah. So, so I find that really fascinating um, and just amazing. So I, but to be there, um, I really loved being with Sonia. She's such a kind person. She made food for me every day. And <laughs> um, I just got to hang out in the house with her and her dog and, and, you know, just, we set up interviews and some we shot so much stuff that didn't even come out in the film. I could do a part two, I think. Right. Um, but I wanted to make it really the general kind of overview of what she does. Cause if you really want to get deep into what she does, then, you know, just go sign up on her Patreon and you'll get to, you know, get into the complicated stuff. Cause there's a lot of complicated stuff with her that I didn't put in the movie. Right. Uh, but I wanted to show like how her techniques worked and the very basics of the instrumental transcommunication. And when I got back, when I got back, I wanted to try to do my own audio recordings with a recorder. And it was it was pretty cool because I did a recording and I put out the intention. I said, you know, uh, grand granddad, if you're out there, like I want to hear from you. And I 
played some white noise and I recorded it with my cell phone with my cell phone's um, audio recorder program. I recorded like three minutes and I, I transferred it over to my laptop. I listened to it. I didn't hear anything. It was just white noise. I didn't hear any messages. But here's the weird part. When I got into my car the next morning, and this never happens, you know how like if, you're, if your phone is attached to Bluetooth, like your Spotify comes on right away? Right. Well, usually when I get in my car, Spotify comes on. Well, when I got into my car, my audio notepad came on. And that <laughs> never happens. Never happens. Hello, so it's granddad. Playing, it's playing the white noise, but I'm not hearing a message. Mm -hmm. And then I go to try to turn it off, and it would not turn off. Of course not. I had to turn my car off, turn it back on. The message came back up. And oh. it, it wouldn't stop until I removed the file from my phone. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. so I didn't hear a message, but that was very phenomenal because it hasn't happened since and it never happened. Right. Sure. Yeah, Robert, that. that just that just gave me goosebumps. I love <laughs> that. Um, yeah. You know, I'm a big fan and, and quite frankly about skeptics. It's like believe or don't believe, you know, mm -hmm. each of us has a free will to embrace whatever journey that we're on at this moment in time. I never try to convince anyone. Um, right. I just live my truth, just like you are living your truth. Um, I have a great fun story to share about uh, your grandfather and manipulating sound. My dad was a World War II guy, um, big strapping guy, uh, you know, lived to 91, lived a very healthy, fun, life of the party kind of guy. So, uh, and he was an electrician by trade. So my dad, after he crossed, you know, I was really sad and I was in the throes of writing my book anyway. So I was out here in my studio and I'm writing the chapter about his crossing and tears are streaming down my face. And when I write, I always listen to Ludovico Inati. He's this Italian composer, pianist, whatever. So I'm listening to Ludovico and I'm sobbing and I'm writing the whole chapter about my dad crossing over. And all of a sudden, my music switched to anchors away. He was a Navy guy, World War II, wow. right? I like started laughing and crying and screaming to my husband at the same time to come out to the studio. I was like, Tom, Tom. He comes out, he opens the door, he hears anchors away blaring. And he just looked at me and he goes, your dad. And I said, yeah. I mean, I didn't touch anything. My music just literally shifted over. So I get it. Like that was 100% your grandfather sending you a message, although you couldn't maybe discern what it was. Mm -hmm. He knew that you would get it. So that's really cool. Thank you for sharing that. <clears throat> You're welcome. Yeah, that, that was really incredible. Um, and another one where spirit manipulated audio was in a scott milligan seance that was very poignant for me and my wife my wife maggie um have you had any podcasts with scott i have not but if you connect me i will have him on in a heartbeat okay. as a matter of fact anyone you want to send my way uh sandra okay. knows that i send people to sandra sandra sends people to me um there's a very general uh a generous community of us afterlife geeks, so to speak. Yeah. And we all work together. Nobody is like, oh, that's mine, or nobody gets territorial. Yeah. We all yeah. are in this together, which is what you put in one <laughs> email. So so please go on. Well, in um for those that don't know, Scott Milligan is a physical medium and that's a whole nother show and we can be here for an hour talking about it. But the at the end of um the seance this was in new orleans in 2021 no 2022 um we had my, my my wife and i had a little moment where we came back from a seance in another location i think it was a year before and for some we had this chalkboard in our kitchen where you would write on it with a you know piece of chalk a message for the day and she had gotten uh, reading from Phil that her and her great great grandma came through and I don't know something possessed me that day to write all you need is love in cursive on the chalkboard 
uh, but it wasn't in my handwriting. It was in cursive. I usually write in all capital letters. So I just scribbled, all you need is love. I was thinking about like the Beatles song. Um, and it kind of, it was like, for me, it was like coming from her grandma. Um, so fast forward a year later, we have this experience at the seance and it was the, that seance I had, um, asked Scott Milligan if he was willing to let me film him for a documentary and he agreed. Um, but we didn't do any of the filming there. It was just like, a the handshake deal. And it was almost like we were being celebrated during the seance because all the phenomenon in the room was happening to me. Uh, um, incredible stuff, like just a long story, but um, they play music in, in, in the seance, in the dark. And the very last song, well, I'm, I'll give you one guess what song came on. Got it. All you need is love, baby. And I asked Darren, I said, is like, are you guys playing that? And he's like, no, my hands are not on the machine. It's playing that. That song was picked by them. It's not even on our playlist. It was coming <laughs> through the, the Bluetooth speaker at the end. All you need is love. And that was yeah. just, that was totally for us. And I was floored by it. I love that. Wow. The synchronicities, they just start adding up. And oh, yeah. I, I do believe too, the more open we are, uh, and the more that we, you know, you have to believe to receive, right? And if you're asking for something and then a sign comes and you're like, you try to logic it away, well, then of course. But if you're open to uh, all of it, you get more of it. Um, it happens all the time. So can I tell you a quick sign story? Please. I, I'm fascinated, Robert. So we literally, you can go on. So just Keep on going, and uh, my network is very cool about me running <laughs> over. So, so uh, a few months ago, we went out to Brighton to meet up with Scott Milligan, and we we're doing a little bit of filming for the documentary, but it was really a lot of hanging out and just having fun. And we were going to drive around the countryside and go see some like there's castles there in England. And I don't know, I live in Miami. We don't have anything like that. But they have like <laughs> Anne Boleyn's castle, a 45 minute drive away. So we're like, all right, we're going. And we're driving in the beautiful countryside. And earlier this year, <clears throat> one of my photographer friends, his name was Jim Perry. He worked with me with the Patron team that I was telling you about. He passed away unexpectedly for me this year of uh, cancer and I didn't even know he was sick. Um, so I just put on, turned on Facebook one day and there was like this memorial for, for Jim Perry. I was like, Oh, what? Like, I can't believe it. Like Jim Perry's gone. And I ended up direct messaging his wife who we've never really talked before. Um, and you know, she's, you know, just to say, you know, you know, me and Jim were really good friends and I have all these photos if you need them or whatever you need, like I can, you know, I'm here for you. And she was very thankful. And she told me, yeah, Jim always spoke about you and, and your adventures together. I mean, we did like the Indy 500 together and all this crazy stuff, had great times. Um, but Jim was a photographer as well. So he has all this photography gear and lenses. And his wife, Maria, said, you know, you should just come up to Ohio and get this gear um, because I don't know what to do with it. So there's probably like tens of thousands of dollars worth of stuff. And I said, well, you know, I can help you sell it. And she's like, no, I just want you to have it. I'm like, wow. Okay. Well, that's great. So I'll come up and get the, the gear. But then I was thinking um, while I was in Brighton, well, why not, instead of just going up there and receiving this gear, let's make this part of the evidence of the afterlife documentary. How could I do that? <clears throat> well, if I go to her house and get the gear, then we can do a Zoom one on one meeting with Phil Dykes or Carrie McLeod, and I'll film it from that perspective of being on the Zoom call, right? So, because a lot of people get their readings on Zoom. Sure. So it'd be cool to show that in the movie from her perspective. Like she's going to log onto the computer and have this one on one reading with, with one of the two mediums. And then I can interview her afterwards, and then she can give me photos of Jim, and he could be in the film. I thought this was like a really great idea, right? Great way to honor him. Yeah. Well, guess what happens? What happens? We're driving down this country road, and I literally glance up from my phone as I'm telling her, 
and a sign goes by and it said Perry Cottages. Jim Perry, <laughs> Maria Perry, Perry Cottages flies by. The one second I look up from my phone on his long drive to this castle we were going to. Wow. <clears throat> so that was it. I was, and I was telling her, I'm like, oh my God. Um, and, and she had already started following We Don't Die and We Don't Die films before we had this conversation. And she's like, I can't believe that's you. I didn't even know that was you. So it was pretty an incredible um, uh, synchronicity, I suppose. I love that. I yeah. love when, you know, when we do receive those signs, acknowledging and the person. Like I'm one of those individuals that walks my puppy through our neighborhood and I'm basically talking to everyone that has gone before me. Um, it's just a good mindful meditation and a chance for me to shout out people. And if I forget somebody, someone will come through and I'll go, oh my gosh, I didn't forget about you, Roger. How you doing? You know, and yeah. I'm sure, you know, the crazy lady walking her dog through the neighborhood as she's having quite the conversation. But the good thing is when you wear earbuds and you're listening to music, you know, people think you might be on the phone. So I just blew my cover. I'm actually talking to all of my deceased family, friends and relatives that have gone before me. Oh, man, Robert, I could talk to you all day. Um <laughs> What is coming up for you next and what can the next room audience do to support you in this amazing Thank evidentiary you. journey that you're on in the afterlife? Well, right now we just released a TV program called Past But Present. Okay. Which is with evidential mediumship, uh, evidential medium Jennifer Brazier from the West Coast, Seattle. Okay. Uh, one of my best friends now since we've been working together. And let me explain really briefly how that show came to be. Okay. Um, I knew that Jennifer was going to be in Florida visiting with two friends in a, in a house in Central Florida. And I said, why don't I go up and interview her for Rinaldi to have like an expert medium in the Rinaldi movie? And they said, yeah, come on. We're going to be there for, for five days. Come hang out for a couple of days. So they gave me a room in this house <clears throat> and we're just having a blast. You know, I filmed some interviews with the, with the girls. And then um, one morning me and Jennifer are sitting on the back porch of this beautiful home on the St. John's river in central Florida. And there's a big forest preserve next to us to our right. And she says, I am being, she always says I'm lit up right now. She's getting the goosebumps. I'm lit up. Uh, I'm being drawn into the woods. Let's go. I said, well, let me get my camera and we go into the <laughs> woods and she's and then we get, um, you know, our other our other friends to come with us and we go wandering in this in the woods and Jennifer starts picking up messages from the spirit world that are indigenous people to the land there. And to make a long story short, it was just a beautiful like, you know, moment where she was getting, you know, all these welcoming messages from from these natives. And we actually spent the whole day running around with the camera and getting validation from our friends that lived there, uh, even to the point where she had a, a guy named Doc. She's like, I got a guy here. He's a doctor, but his name his like short name is Doc. And he was a pilot and Jennifer got us to drive to this one neighborhood and we get to this neighborhood and all the houses have little airplanes in their garages. <laughs> okay. Um, then we go all the way to the back of the neighborhood and we find this giant Indian mound. You know what those are? Like where burials happen yes. over thousands of years. This is like this two story Indian mound. We have our little moment there, but then she sees this pond and she's like, we got to go over there. We go over to the pond and there's a coral rock about, three feet wide and two feet tall and we look at the rock and on the opposite side of the rock is a memorial to some dude named so-and-so but quote unquote doc his wow. name was doc doc i can't remember his last name oh at the my goodness um so we're like blown away because we've been chasing doc around this neighborhood and then we were validated with a sign sure <laughs> <clears throat> okay, I'm lit up now. And he was a pilot and we're in this neighborhood with all these planes. Wow. So, I, so while I'm filming this, I'm like, this has got to be a TV show. Sure. So that 
all that footage um, I just started to come out with on our YouTube channel because we never actually made that part of the show because I wasn't really in my um, my best producer mode that day. I was kind of just with the camera without the microphone, handheld, it's shaky, right. it's very good, like pilot episode. But I said, we need to do this show. Um, so then later that year, we bought tickets to go to Denver. <clears throat> And we flew Jennifer out to Denver. We only told her we're going to Denver airport. You don't know where you're going after that. And we drove three hours into the Colorado Rockies um, to some places that I researched. And one was called St. Elmo, it was a ghost town. I just looked up ghost towns and I did my research on the place. So Jen had no idea where we're going. We drive three hours into the mountains, spend a night in a cabin and then go to this ghost town and she starts picking up on all the information from the spirits that live there, which included, you know, it was a mining town and she even had names. She had the name Patty, who was a guy named Patrick Hurley, who owned all these like saloons in the town that we researched and found out to be true. Um, so it, it's a really great adventure show that deals with mediumship. So basically it's like a reading of the land and the history of the land. Um, we did six episodes. We actually filmed seven, but we didn't finish the last one because it was here in Miami. And we have one little roadblock um, for that one because Jennifer actually got messages from the gangster Al Capone. Oh my. In, while we were in this famous hotel called the Biltmore, which he did frequent. There's an Al Capone suite in the Biltmore Hotel, which is now called the Presidential Suite. Because every president that's alive has been to this presidential suite. Um, but in the early days, it was Al Capone suite. And she's getting messages from Al Capone. Um, and as I'm filming this, I'm like, oh, this is totally Al Capone. She's like, I got a guy here. He's like, his name starts with a, his last name starts with a C. And he's like saying, I had to do what I had to do. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is Al Capone. And his pictures <laughs> in the lobby of the hotel. And she's like, he's going to show us his picture in the hotel. Sure enough, we go down and find it. Um, the only reason we didn't make that episode part of the first series is because we couldn't get a reservation to go into the suite. Ah, it's, it's this two-story suite. It's very famous, and um, yeah. we want to spend some like a night in there and do sure. the episode there and see what she gets. Um, but we did three episodes in Colorado, one in St. Augustine, one in New Orleans, oh, and then okay. Casa Dega. Ah, oh, nice. And all these are available to rent or buy um, pretty inexpensive um, <clears throat> on past but present.com. Okay. That's past like P A S S E D, not the other way. Right. Exactly. Uh, well, good. Uh, and I will make sure I have all the links after we get done recording today. You know, just I'll double check with you because I'll put mm -hmm. them on my show page and, and on all my social medias as well. Um, just one quick thought before we wrap up. Um, I think with the Biltmore suite, you're just going to have to ask Al for some assistance. Yeah. And then I think he will clear the way and you will get a phone call. <laughs> and they will probably donate the suite to you so that yeah. you can get in there and film because it's just going to benefit them. I mean, mm -hmm. think about it. I mean, it'll be booked forever for the next 10 years once your documentary right. comes out yeah. or your episode comes out. So what do you say, Al? Um, yeah. Okay. In closing, any final thoughts that you'd like to share with me? And I'd love oh. to have you back on anytime a new project comes up or you want to get the word out, just shoot me an email or give me a text or whatever, and we'll get you back on the show. Yeah, I mean, anybody that wants to um, see what we're doing, past but present, and then um, We Don't Die Films is the hub for all the We Don't Die movies, evidence of the afterlife which in production. And there's a donation button on there if they want to get involved with that. <clears throat> um, regardless, if we get an another single donation, I'm going to still make this movie. Good and for you. Yeah. And it's, you know, I'm, I'm dedicated to doing it. And I think it'll be out in 2025, maybe okay. earlier. But I'm having a blast doing it and I'm learning a lot. And just sitting in Phil and Carrie's courses have taught me so much about myself and my ability to literally go from someone who didn't believe in the afterlife to reading people. And um, I've read people now and with their training and, and been spot on and gotten the yeses. 
Um, I even piggybacked off of readings, not intentionally, but while filming, sitting behind the tripod and the camera, filming a one-on-one -on -one, um, re reading with the with the students. The one the recipient wasn't getting the information. They weren't getting it. They weren't getting it. In my head pops in this whole picture, and uh, and I I was I felt embarrassed to go up to the lady afterwards, but it wouldn't leave my mind. And I went up to her at the end of the day and I said, was your dad a sport fisherman? She's like, yep. I was like, yep, I saw him. He has a beard. He was holding up his fish. He had a beer in his hand and he was taking a picture with all his buddies holding up the fish. She's like, that's my dad. And, and that came from paying attention to the classes that Phil and Carrie give. Um, so they're, they're just great tutors and people should follow them and they're at mymediumship.com and i also have a class on udemy which is you the letter u d e y.com and we're i'm helping them with that so putting out classes for them <coughs> on udemy okay yeah so busy 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 with uh video all around the spirit world i was forced out of my day jobs and jumped head first into this world and I'm loving every minute of it and I don't see myself turning back. Fantastic. Robert, you are a conduit. That's exactly a good way because it is now transferred over to you learning and absorbing and, and then being able to share. What a cool thing. That lady must have been so excited to hear about that picture of her dad. Mm -hmm. uh, Robert Lyon is my guest. The next room is the show. Thank you for all of the love and the ratings and uh, the downloads, obviously, to grow this podcast. We need to continue to spread the good word. Um, and please go on the Facebook page. You can follow me on Twitter, which is X now, um, and Instagram as well. Robert Lyon, thank you for coming on yep. the next room. And please come back again. That was a lot of fun. Anytime. <laughs>